Church, would you please join me in welcoming the whole planet Earth to Big Time Burleson, Texas, y'all. This is the Open Door Experience. Boom! <laughs> Hello, my friends. Blessing and peace on you. Hello, Houston campus. Hello, my friends that are watching all over the world and everybody here that's here in the house. So happy that you're here today on this special Memorial Day. Memorial Day has always meant a lot to me. Um, and typically on Memorial Day, I nearly always preach and tell the story of my Uncle Johnny that died in Laos while working for the Central Intelligence a Agency. He's actually been memorialized and uh, it was classified for 30 years. And in and, and 19, well, 30 years, let's see, it was in 2000 something, I'm sorry. But after 30 years after his death, um, it was declassified. And then the story came out of exactly how Uncle Johnny had died. And uh, on, he worked for Air America. He worked for the CIA. And uh, if you ever get a chance to go to Langley and you go to the CIA memorial, you'll see this. This is what the memorial looks like. And those all represent CIA members who have died in the line of duty. And then there's the Book of Life and the Book of Remembrance, actually, at the bottom of that. And I have circled Brother Johnny Kearns. And that's my Uncle Johnny from Alvarado, Texas. That's him. And it is such a great honor to me that, um, that he's been, that he's actually remembered and that people go and look at his name and know, I don't know who this is, but I choose to remember him because that's a good way to honor somebody. So on this day, I honor my uncle Johnny. And I remember back in 1972 when he was leaving for Vietnam, I remember the last time I ever saw him. Um, I remember when our family got word that he had died. I remember how hard that was on my nana and on my papa and on my mama. I remember that very difficult Christmas that we all went through where we just went, Uncle Johnny is not coming home. I know from my own family's experience what a family goes through when such a thing happens. And I just wanna just say to everybody that is here and that is watching all over the planet Earth, if you're mourning the death of somebody that you love with all of your heart today, and if they have given their life in the line of duty, I wanna just say this to every single family member, thank you. Thank you for choosing to live. Thank you so much for making good choices in spite of what has been handed to you. And we honor and we remember your loved one today. Amen. Well, I've been preaching this sermon series that is called The Elephant in the Room, where you talk about the things that nobody wants you to talk about. And that's a lot of fun for me. Uh, it's very irreverent to point out the elephant in the room. And I love irreverent humor. I don't know about you. I think things are funny when everybody's like, nothing's supposed to, nothing funny is supposed to be happening here. And I'm like, okay, that's a perfect time to do something funny, right? And we talked about different kinds of things. One of the things that we talked about, and I took on the amazing revelation. I mean, and I'm telling you guys, this is a game changer. And, and if, you're, if you're below 20 years old and you don't know this, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna tell you something that will absolutely blow your mind. And you never heard this from the media. You never heard this um, you know, in the school system. But I'm gonna tell you something, and I just want you to get ready. And I want you to search it out, okay? But here's, here's this, this, this is the deal. A boy is a boy and a girl is a girl. Boom. Okay. So we were like, like that amazing revelation. Well, we're going to have to pray about it and search it out. That sounds like a conspiracy theory. No, it's true, dude. It's absolutely true. And then we also just, we've been going through different things. We've been talking about the church and literally talking about, you know, I, I want to get off into, oh my gosh, how obvious it is when the church is all about money and how sickening it is. Right? And just... And it just makes us sick, you know, just like, <clears throat> right? And also, too, also how sickening it is when the church has limp-wristed leadership who will not get up and tell the truth, right? I, I want to I talk about the feminization of men in our culture and then also, too, in the church, where the only way a dude can be godly is to not be a dude. That is baloney. That is absolutely baloney. Well, we don't like, uh, we don't like toxic masculinity anymore. Uh, well, we needed it last week in Uvalde. Somebody showed it up. Some toxic masculine dude showed up and ended the shooting. And praise God, he didn't run away pulling up his skirt. 
but actually went out there and went, I'm ending this thing. I'm busting in and I will shoot you. I will end this thing. You're not going to harm any more of our kids. And we need that same kind of an attitude in the body of King Jesus where men of God stand up and say, not on my watch. This is not happening to my family. This is not happening to my city. I am full of the Holy Ghost. God Almighty has anointed me to make a difference. Well, you just need to be quiet because you're making us nervous. We don't care. Let hell tremble. Let the devil say, oh no, he's up again. I wish the brother would stay in bed. I wish he'd play video games all day. I wish he would just back off a little bit. No, let's don't do that. So I've been talking about the elephant in the room today. This message is called memory like an elephant as we choose to remember, right? As we choose to remember. You know, there's lots of interesting idioms in the English language, sayings from region to region that people understand and that they use to express certain things like, like the term under the weather, right? Or the term, uh, the ball is in your court now. You have to understand the context of that to understand what somebody is saying. In other words, somebody is saying, it's, it's not my responsibility now, it's now your responsibility. The ball is in your court. It's time for you to take action, right? Or he spilled the beans, or the term going down in flames. Don't sit on the fence, right? Uh, the best thing, it's the best thing since sliced bread. Or if somebody says he eats like a bird, which is, which is weird because birds eat a whole lot, but you know what that tends to mean. It means, you know, hey, the brother just doesn't eat much, which, which everybody says about me, I'm sure. The term through thick and thin, or hey man, you need to jump on this bandwagon, or the term miss the boat. And then I love Western culture and I love like cowboy sayings, right? Um, you know, you gotta have an ace in the hole, right? So you know what that means, right? Everybody here know what that means, right? It means you gotta have a backup, you gotta have something going on, everybody else, does, some kind of a hidden advantage, right? Or I, I don't tend to ever say the number 13. I tend to, I tend to call it a baker's dozen. Right? And I know that my grandparents did that as well. Um, uh, if, if, if somebody's bowing up to you, see, that's an idiom, bowing up. You know, you know what that means, right? If somebody's being ugly and they're like, man, they kind of start swaying back and forth, you can tell them, hey, you need to pull in your horns. <laughs> you, you might use that term, you know, that dog don't hunt, meaning it's, it's an argument or it's an idea that just isn't going to work, right? Or if you call somebody yellow bellied. You know what that means. Or this is something I say all the time. Man, that brother bit off more than he can chew. Right? I like that one. So have you ever heard the term bite the dust? Okay, like, yeah, that's a big time cowboy term. That's actually from the Bible. I'm like, yeah, it comes from Psalm 70, 72 verse 9. Uh, they that dwell in the wilderness shall bow before him and his enemies shall lick the dust. Or the term broken heart. Like, yeah, that's a common term. That's, that's a Bible term. That's an idiom from the Word of God. That's Psalms 34, verse 18. The Lord is near unto them that are brokenhearted and save such as have a contrite spirit. I, I, you know, hey, man, that brother made it by the skin of his teeth. The skin of his teeth comes from Job 19, 20. My bone cleaves to my skin and to my flesh, and I am escaped with the skin of my teeth. That comes from the Bible. Or how about the term a drop in the bucket? That's Isaiah 40, verse 15. Behold, the nations are as a drop of a bucket and are counted as small dust of the balance. Behold, he takes up the aisles as fine dust. The term fly in the ointment. I can think of, another, I can think of several ones that's like that. That's really funny, but it's not appropriate. And so, <laughs> but the fly in the ointment is a biblical version. Ecclesiastes 10.1, dead flies make a perfumer's ointment and give off a stench. It's like, okay, Man, we got this thing, and it's awesome, but there's something really bad that's in it. That's what that means. Or a lamb to the slaughter. That's Jeremiah eleven nineteen. Or nothing but skin and bones. Like, that dude ain't nothing but skin and bones. Well, that comes from Job 19, 19. That's what it says. Um, he says, I am nothing but skin and bones. Did you guys know that these phrases come from the Bible? Isn't that cool? Or right, how about this? Uh, poor Leanna, she's been dealing with Troy, and now she's at her wit's end. <laughs> at wit's end is a biblical phrase, and that comes from Psalms 107, 27. 
They are at their wit's end, the Bible says. Or if you say, okay, let me just tell you something. You know what this looks like to me? It looks like the writing on the wall. I saw the writing on the wall. And it means the harbinger of doom is what that means. And that comes from Daniel chapter 5. Or, hey, that brother walks the straight and the narrow. Hey, listen, I'm telling you right now, I told, I, I, I told the line. I walked the straight and narrow. That comes from Matthew 7, verse 14. That's where that term comes from. And then I got to look at, I got to look at these things, and then I came across... The term or the idiom, he's got a memory like an elephant. Now, that does not come from the Bible, but in the midst of looking up biblical idioms, I came across all these really cool idioms, and I was like, memory like an elephant, memory like an elephant. And I went, I bet that's not true. I bet you they don't really have really good memories. And I went to my Scientific American site, and I started looking up, and dude, it is absolutely true. I mean, they, they seriously have I mean, next level, ridiculous memory. And it's a survival thing for them, and it's also a social thing for them. So, um, in fact, just about five years ago, there was a terrible, terrible drought in Tanzania. And all of the elephants, all of the elephants that were under the age of 30 died. And the ones that are above the age of 30 live. Not all of the elephants, but it's like the huge majority of all the elephants under the age of 30 died. And like, why is that? because there was a bad drought 30 years ago and those elephants took a completely different route to a completely different place than they had ever been. And they remembered it, they remembered the path 30 years later. We're talking about 30 years later, I mean, they remembered the path, you know? I mean, man, I can't even find my keys. (laughs) I lose my glasses so much, everybody thinks I'm Catholic. I'm like, where's my freaking glasses? It's terrible. I mean, I can't, honestly. I mean, they, they, their whole deal, it's, it's amazing. And I was fascinated yesterday when I was looking at this and I thought, hey man, this would be a really good thing for me to bring to y'all because it is Memorial Day. And let's talk about the importance of memory. And guys, the whole theme of honor by remembering is a biblical theme. That's the way that it is in King Jesus. That's the way that it is in the kingdom. Deuteronomy chapter eight, verse 11, says, beware that you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, his statutes, which I command you today. He's like, what you remember is serious business to me. It's like really important. And it's one of the ways that you walk with God in loyalty. It's a huge part of walking in the, in the, in the kingdom. In the practice and the prophetic act of communion, you guys know all about communion, right? Okay, Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. He's like, this is how you show me you're loyal. This is how you honor me. You remember me. Honoring God by what we remember and also being watchful are qualities of kingdom people in covenant with God. If you're just a mere Christian, and I want to just tell you, uh, there's too many mere Christians. There's a lot of Christians who respect Christianity, but they do not follow Jesus, right? Right? It's not enough just to be a mere Christian. Man, you gotta follow King Jesus. And if you're gonna follow King Jesus, one of the things that I can tell you is that you respect your covenant with God Almighty. And part of that is this, you're gonna be watchful, which means you're gonna be faithful in situations where you're tempted to go to sleep. Amen. Well, you know, my kids are a certain age and you know what, man, I just don't want, I don't feel like dealing with them anymore, right? Uh, No, you have to remain watchful. You have to be loyal. Like, man, I went through so much hell with school last year. I'm just going to back way off this year. No, no, no. Be watchful. Be loyal to your family. Be loyal to the Lord. Your watchfulness is a really big part of walking with the Lord. Now, being watchful also has to do with what you will remember. Like, there are certain things, man, I'm just not going to forget. I'm not going to forget this. I will remember how important this is to the Lord. And that whole thing is all about walking in the fear of the Lord. So the biblical term of the fear of the Lord, that biblical term, it doesn't mean that you walk around terrorized of the thought of King Jesus. It literally means that you love what God loves and you hate what God hates and you do what God does and you don't do what God doesn't do. And you're just going to line up with that. Man, it's so important, friends, for us to walk in the fear of the Lord. Amen. And it's all about loyalty. It's all about commitment. It's about covenant. And one of the ways that we will finish well is 
We will determine all the way until the very end. There's certain things that I just will not forget. I'm just not going to. So whenever we partner with the Holy Spirit, one of the things that happens is the Holy Spirit causes you to remember the right things. Are there any Holy Ghost folk in here? Come on. Me too. Man, it's not enough. I'm sorry. I'm going to say this again. It is not enough. Get ready. Get ready. This is going to make somebody mad. It's not enough to know scripture. You got to know Jesus. The scriptures testify of Jesus. It'd be a tremendous mistake for us to downplay the importance of scripture. That's not what I'm doing. But just because you know the Bible don't mean anything. The devil knows the Bible. The devil knows the Bible. The devil will quote the Bible to you all day long, but he ain't full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now you got to have the spirit of the living God within you. And here's one of the things that happened. When you start partnering with the Lord and when you start walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit causes you to remember things. That's what Jesus said in John chapter 14, verse 26. He says, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I have said to you. So you don't got to remember on your own. Isn't, isn't that good news? I mean, listen, I was with Pastor David and I was with Freddie, and I told, I, listen, there's three dudes, and we were leaving my ranch, and we were, we were about to head out to Redemption Ranch, and I told him, I said, hey, I got to stop at the store, and I got to get something. Don't let me forget. I, I'm serious. I'm really scared I'm going to forget this. Don't let me forget. They're like, okay, okay, we got you, and I said, dude, there's not a woman among us. We will forget, <laughs> and then what happened, David? We forgot, and that's exactly right. I got about 300 miles west of here, and went, there. And we all just started busting out laughing and said, man, that gummit we needed. And in, we needed a girl among us because we can't remember anything. <laughs> well, when you don't have a woman to help you remember stuff, you still have the power of the Holy Spirit. And he will cause you to remember the right things. Remembering the right things, friends, will motivate you to win battles. And I'll tell you this, if you're sitting there all demoralized, and if you haven't won a battle in a long, long time, and if you haven't seen the power of God, and if you haven't seen a tremendous win, I want to just tell you something. You're remembering something that is toxic. And I would encourage you, remember and get back into the fight. Remember and get up. Remember, remember, remembering the right things will motivate you to win battles. Now, re now, guys, remembering the wrong things will discourage you to the point of defeat. And like, you got lots of good reasons to not do anything. You really do. Man, you know, everybody in the world wants, you know, uh, dope to be legalized so we can just stay high all day long and then look at some government official and say, please govern me. I'm too silly and stupid and sad to be able to do anything. I need you to govern me. I need more rules. Would you please help me? Not me, dude. Not me. I'm walking in the power of the Holy Ghost. That's what I'm going to do. Listen, by myself, I'm a full-blown knucklehead, but with the power of King Jesus, I'm a bad motor scooter. Amen. And so are you. Well, King David is famous for saying some trust in chariots, some in horses. But then he says this, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. We will remember the name. We will remember how we know him personally. If you choose to remember the name of the Lord, you are choosing to remember how you know Jesus personally. And it's just really important. You say, yeah, I see all this hell coming, but this is how I know Jesus. And that's just good language to have. Well, don't you watch the news as little as possible. Honestly, and I don't, I don't care who it is. I don't trust any of those jokers. They're liars. They all have a daggum agenda. And they need you addicted to them. And it's like, this is the new thing for you to be scared of today. Well, I, I will remember how I know Jesus. This is how I know Jesus. And that's what King David was talking about when he said, man, some trust in chariots and some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord. We will remember how we know him. And once again, if you don't know him personally, dude, get to know King Jesus. He loves you. He totally loves you so much. 
And man, you need to build this great big history with God and say, okay, instead of me having a great big history of all the mistakes I've ever made and how people would stab me in the back, people that are supposed to hang with me didn't, and I went through this bad time and that bad time. You man, you ought to have a list of how good God has been to you. Dude, one time, tell you this, me and Leanna was so broke we couldn't even pay attention. And God showed up and did a financial miracle for us. One time, me and my son was in India and these jokers, he's standing right back there. Look at that good looking boy. Look at him. Ooh. I love you, big. Love you so. Much. These jokers went to kidnap us, and he was 16 years old. Kidnap in India. He's like, what do we do, Daddy? Hit him! Boom, boom, boom. It was awesome. A great father son bonding moment. <laughs> I felt the Lord in that. I did. And the brother's still standing there. He's 30 years old now. Amen. Wait, you need to have a long list. Man, you need to have a long list of how you know Jesus. I know Jesus. Man, when I got freaked out, he showed up and helped me anyway. I know Jesus. When I really messed up, he didn't show up and hate me. He showed up and put me in an honorable place. I didn't even deserve it. Man, this is how I know Jesus. This is how I know Jesus. Man, you're going to have to choose to remember the name of the Lord your God, how you know Jesus. Mmm, <laughs> King Jesus. Yeah, you have to decide, I'm not going to forget what God is like. Like, well, don't you see all this kind of stuff? Eh, eh, my anxiety. Oh, I'm sorry, honey. I can't contribute to the family. I just can't work for another boss. I just have too much anxiety. Get up! Quit that! Quit it! Like, man, nobody talks like this anymore. And everybody just thinks I'm nut. I'm telling you, people think I am a nut. And I like that. <laughs> Just, I'm not going to forget what God is like because God is not going to forget me. He's not. He's not going to leave me. He's not going to forget me. He's not going to forsake me. And so I think I'm going to remember him. Genesis 9, 16 says, and the bow shall be in the cloud that I might remember the everlasting covenant. Isn't it amazing how a bow, the rainbow, which it's a, it's a bow, like a bow and arrow that's pointing straight up. It's a bow, right? I used to think, you know, it was a bow like Jan Crouch, you know, like Cindy Lauper. <laughs> bow. But it's a, it's, a, it's a bow, man. It's like strong. It's like a weapon, right? It's like a weapon. And it represents holy covenant. No wonder the rainbow has been attacked. No wonder it's been stolen and been attacked and said, we want to define a whole new covenant. <laughs> yeah. A big part of your covenant is remembering and making sure that you remember. Even the thief on the cross, man, he turned to King Jesus and said, hey, will you remember me, Lord? When you enter into your kingdom? Is there any way that you can remember me? In other words, will you not go there without me? When you, when you choose to remember somebody, it's like taking them with you into a certain place. And so when Jesus says, this you do in remembrance of me, he's like, bring me in this way. Amen. Amen, amen. So the word remember is in the Bible exactly 148 times. And attached to remember is don't forget. Don't forget. Remember and don't forget. Remember and don't forget. Remember and don't forget. And he says that over and over and over again. And let's look at a few of these. Okay, there is a kingdom principle of remembering. And you qualify for certain things and you are disqualified for certain things within the kingdom by what you choose and what you do not choose to remember. Amen? So it's a, it's a really, really, really big deal. So the kingdom principle of remembering. One of the things that you and I have got to remember, friends, is the promises that God Almighty has given us. 
And like, why? This list will keep you in times of trouble. Like, you'd be in bad trouble and you say, well, I'm in bad trouble and I don't know what's going to happen in this situation. But I do know this. The Lord has promised me this. And God Almighty has promised me that. Well, nobody can have very specific promises from God. Dude, you better have some specific promises from God. And you need to quote those things. And you need to declare those things. And you need to stand on those things. And you need to prophesy those things. And let me tell you why people don't do that. Because we're scared we might get disappointed. When? Somebody call you a wambulance. What if I'm disappointed? Oh, well, that'd be the most horrible thing I'm possibly ever imagined. I woke up worried about that this morning, that you might be disappointed. No, I did not. And whenever you say, you know what, I might be disappointed what you're saying is sometimes God's not really on his game. It's an accusation of the character of the Most High God. So just go, no, this is what God said, and this is what I believe. Amen? It's just so important, man. It's just so dadgum important. And this, this list will keep you during times of trouble. In Galatians 4.28, we are called, and you are called, the children of promise. That's what you're called. Psalms 27, 13, I would have fainted had I not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. That is something I quote all the time. I'm like, here's the deal. Uh, Pastor Troy, how in the world have you been in full-time ministry since 1986? Well, I want to tell you, I would have fell out had I not believed I was going to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Like, I ain't waiting until I'm dead to see the goodness of the Lord. I want to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And what is that? It's how God answers the evil within my life. It's the manifest presence. It's the glory of God. Whenever, whenever Brother Moses came before the Lord and he said, show me your glory. I want to see your glory. Come on. What do you got? I want to see it. I don't want to just hear you, man. I want to see you. He said, okay, I will cause my goodness to pass before you. God is good looking. Amen. You don't know what God looks like? He looks like goodness. And it's like, man, I would have felt, I, you know, and maybe, maybe you think that you just don't deserve to see the goodness of God in the land of the living. So you're just going to, you know, stay in a certain place and just be miserable and wait and wait until you die and say, no, I'm not going to bail on Jesus, but I'm not expecting to see anything good. Listen, you should expect to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. And here's the deal. You won't make it if you don't. Hanging on to the promises of God are so important, so important. Here's another list. Friends, you need to remember the miracles that God has done within your life. This list will keep you trusting in God. My goodness, how I would love to just sit up here and just tell you miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And, and just tell you, man, my life has been full of so many amazing miracles. You're like, well, I have it. No, it has. You just didn't know it, and you missed them. Amen. And that's a really sad thing. I mean, that's, that's really sad for people to, have, to people have such a miraculous life and never know it. Live their entire life not knowing that God was doing amazing things for them. You know, Jesus, you know, whenever uh, Jesus was born, there was a lot of people in Bethlehem. There's only a couple of people that didn't miss it. Just a couple of folks. Whenever Jesus was resurrected from the dead. Wait, well, let me just say this. Whenever Jesus was in the power of his ministry, he cried over Jerusalem and said, Jerusalem, you missed your day of visitation. You missed it. I'm here. And you missed it. And then, of course, he was resurrected from the dead. And then most everybody missed it. I want to tell you this. You should have a huge list. You should just make yourself think. I, you should just make yourself make a list of miracles that God has done. And if you only have, if you can only in your entire life say, I can really only think of one miracle, pray and thank God over that one miracle. And then you go, oh, well, yeah, I would say that was also a miracle. And before long, you'll be like, ah, ah, I can't stop right. And you just, you'll just start freaking out. And you'll be one of those crazy people that all they want to talk about is Jesus this and Jesus that. All they talk about, my God, here they come again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. They're so upset until they get cancer. 
And then they're like, oh, I need to talk to that feller that talks to that Jesus, Jesus. Oh, I, 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 hear, I hear that they, they didn't, that, 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 that I, 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 yeah, just go ahead and just say Jesus. And you be there for them and you help them for that. And you love them and you bless them and you encourage them and you stand there for them. But have a long list of miracles. This will keep you trusting the Lord. Psalm 77, 11 says, I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your miracles of long ago. Amen. That's Psalm 77, verse 11. You know, you, know, you, know, you get healed by remembering miracles. Psalms 119, verse 99. For your testimonies are my meditation. Your testimonies. God, I just want to just think about it. Yes, I do want to think about how you parted the Red Sea, and that's, that's pretty daggum cool. One of my favorite things is you made an axe head float. You know, you guys know that one? I think of that miracle every time I'm looking for my glasses. <laughs> this is somewhere around here. God, just make it rise up so I can see it. I, I'm busy, man. <laughs> Here's another kingdom principle of remembering. The privileges and things that you love about your life. The privileges and the things that you love about your life. Why do I need to know that? This list will keep you thankful. Like, well, I'm not allowed to love my life. Well, you're, yes, yes. I want to just tell you this. You do have to love your life. Like, well, that's a prideful term. It can be a prideful term, but that's not what I'm talking about. You know, man. You owe it to the Lord to, to, to love the life that he's trusted you with. Well, I, don't, I just don't feel like I belong in this day. Well, well welcome to the club, dude. When there, all that is is uh, you don't belong to this world. Yeah. Man, you're not, a, you're not a resident of Texas trying to get to heaven. You're a resident of heaven just traveling through Texas. That's, that's what you are. So... John 1 16 says, from his abundance, we have all received one gracious blessing after another. And we need to just realize how blessed we are. Um, this is why you should also, you should come to the food bank and you should help us give away food. You should come on a missions trip with us and just go, I, I live, listen, you can be Whoever the poorest person in this room is right now or the poorest person watching TV, if you're in the United States of America, you're still part of the top 3% of the entire planet. And I don't know why we're so blessed. And it's been a, I've actually, in, in, in just dealing with so many issues of poverty throughout the world, and I just say, God, I'm just so blessed. I, my goodness. I'm so blessed. And Lord, I don't know why. I mean, you come across so many people who are so much better than you in so many different ways. They have qualities that you don't have. And they love Jesus. And, and, it, and you just go, man, and yet the Lord has blessed me like this. I remember one time I was in, I was in Mexico and we were in the trash dump and we we're giving away food. And this guy had made this house out of pallets. And the house was awesome. I'm talking about it was so amazing. And every single piece of wood that this house was made out of was out of trash. And me and Leanna went into his house and we blessed his house and we prayed for him and we prayed for his bride. And I walked out and I was just crying. And Leanna's like, what's wrong with you? I said, if that man can do this with the life that he has, what do you think God expects me to do with the life that he's given me? Like, I gotta step up. You need to remember the people that God has placed within your life. This list will keep you relational. Remember how valuable it is, friends, to have the relationships that you have. Guys, we also need to remember the poor. We cannot forget the poor. This list will keep you humble and keep you effective within the kingdom. We have to remember the poor. Like, you know why Jesus tells us to remember the poor? Because it's a part of a self-defense mechanism that you train yourself to forget the poor. That remember, we have a responsibility in taking on poverty. Like, well, Pastor Troy, I've got my own poverty. Yeah, I, I totally get it. I, I get it. I, I know what it's like to have your electricity cut off for four months while raising four kids and not have a dime in the world and still be 
still be and still running a food bank and actually pecking up my kids and going from house to house to house to pray for people because they had air conditioning. I know what that's like. But do not think for one second that that takes away your responsibility to remember the poor. We have to remember the poor. We have to do that. We have to make ourselves step into that lane. Amen. No matter what our condition is. And then finally, guys, I want to close by saying this. We have to remember that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. And I cannot forget that. We have to remember, man, that Jesus Christ is raised from the dead. Because that, that's a game changer. It's a lot like, <laughs> I was telling this story. I was, uh, Leanna and I was in uh, Sierra Leone. And while we were in Sierra Leone, we had the bus driver from hell. Now, I want to tell you, I have literally commandeered vehicles on mission trips and go, no, you're not going to run this mission trip. You can sit at the back of the bus and I'm going to drive. And because a bus driver can absolutely ruin a mission trip. And so we handle all that now, and we know how to handle all that, but this is this pretty long time ago. And to kind of illustrate how the brother didn't know how to drive, well, for beginners, he ran over somebody. Come, come. Oh, yeah. And yeah, that's just getting started, okay? It was a bad week. And so we were in Sierra Leone, and I was sick, and all this stuff was going on, and we ran over somebody, and he stopped. You know, I made him stop. Stop! We got to see if, you know, we can stop. That was not a speed bump. <laughs> like, quit it. It wasn't an armadillo and it wasn't a speed bump. I was like, a human being. Stop. Well, he stops. And apparently he knew what he was doing because we were in Sierra Leone. And as soon as the crowd saw that all these, that somebody had been run over and they saw it was that bus that stopped, they just swarmed the bus and started turning it over with me and Leanna in it. Man, that's, that's a rodeo. And I could see all these hands on the window and they were just doing this and they were, and I, I just can, I remember going, okay, here's the deal. Before this bus goes over, I'm just going to open up the back door and I'm just going to jump off screaming like a maniac, like a daggum Comanche Indian. And I'm going to jump off and ah, and I told Leanna, just, just, it's fight and flight, baby. Just, just stick with me. Just let's go. Let's go. Come on. We can do this. We can do this. And I was like, come on. Are you ready? Are you ready? And I got the emergency door. I was like, are you ready, baby? Let's go. Are you ready? Let's go. And she said, but Jesus is going to do something. And I went, oh, I forgot all about Jesus. <laughs> that is such a true story. It's like, yeah, I got to remember, man, that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Now, now, look, you can judge me if you want to, but the next time you're in a mob in Sierra Leone and they're turning over your bus, I hope that you'll do better than I did in that moment. But Leanna did just fine. She said, Troy, cry out. Let's cry out to Jesus here. And I'm like, I got to quit cussing and I need to start praying. And I got to cry out to King Jesus, man. And I got to make this work. This has to happen. And I went, in the name of Jesus, let there be peace. And guys, boom, it was like a peace bomb went off. Man, the bus goes, yeah. and everybody's like, doo, 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 doo. I, for no reason. They just walked off. Ask Leanna. I'm t I, I give you all my word that that is a true story. I mean, as soon as I declared peace, they just stopped and everybody just walked off. And then I was like, that person's okay, let's get out of here. <laughs> the person was okay. <laughs> I will remember that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead. Let's give Jesus a great big praise. So good.